Do you think I have big mom energy? Mommy. With the release of Dragonflight, the game has really felt more alive than ever, bringing brand new features like Hot Dragon People, Not So Hot Dragon People, Dragon Riding, Elemental Dragons, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Soup. It's like someone's pissed in my soup. And with a new expansion comes new dungeons, such as Hogwarts. Middle of bumpfuck nowhere. Way too much fire for one dungeon. And the blue one. Mixed into the dungeon rotation for Season 1 are fan favorite dungeons from other expansions. Dungeons like Halls of Nerfs. Court of I Can't Fucking See Anything with All These Trees. Temple of Jade Serpent because everyone loved Pandaria. And lastly, oh no. Warlords of Draenor. That's what WoW's been missing. More Draenor content. With the release of a new expansion also comes new class changes, and some classes are basically the same, and some classes don't function at all. It's a really exciting time for me, your resident Fury Warrior. I mean, the class is basically the same. We got a few new handy tools. Our rotation used to look like this. Axe, Axe, Screaming Face, Axe, Axe, Screaming Face, Axe, Axe, Screaming Face. Execute, execute, whirlwind, execute. You get the point. And that was it. Times were beautiful, hitting things was grand, and things were good. But no longer. Now we have to track and maintain buffs and stacks. We also have almost too much rage than we can handle for our poor little warrior hearts. We have two charges of reckless abandon to spend before we can even rampage again. So we're always sitting at 100% rage. And every time we axe, it makes our next rampage stronger. So many decisions now, bro. How can Blizzard do this to us? We're just supposed to zug zug. Me not that kind of cow. I am what I am. Two brain cells for two buttons. I have to zug zug harder than I've ever zug zugged before. And so let's get it. Let's get into the keys and let's get all these 20s done. Uh, why are you chasing me? Uh, stop it. I had to run Halls of Valor the most to get this 20 done. So many bugs, so many nerfs, so many problems getting this one. So out of the gate, we pull all the way up the stairs. Big packs make my warrior brain happy. <laughs> Look at those numbers, dude. Yo, who the fuck is this mage, though? Himbo here is probably one of the most boring bosses this season. It's as simple as don't stand in the dragon drive-by and don't stand in the spinny and hit the boss until the boss dies. Oh no, a very clear ball is coming at us. I better move. Yo, that tornado came in fast. After a series of rather large packs and our mage getting completely obliterated. Watch out, watch out. Dude, whoever coded these big guys needs to be fired. I can't even hit these guys as melee. <laughs> Just let me pump, please. To deal with this cleansing flame cast right before the second boss, you either have to step out of the circle or kick him. And I chose to do neither. Now Herja here is a completely different game. First you stand in this bubble to stay safe, but it still absolutely melts everybody. I thought we were playing World of Warcraft and not a bullet hell. We have a bubble in a bubble, and this storm still shreds us. Not me though, because I'm built different. And I'm trash. You die as you lived without honor. But we got her down four deaths later. So on the third boss, it uh it broke. And it uh threw our key. Thanks, Blizzard. Why is he casting that so often? Is it just me or does he never cast it that many times in a row? I don't know what's going on. Like, why does he? Past, why does he feel like he has a million fucking health? He does. I did. Are you gonna be able to do four percent? Uh, maybe. Nope. No. So we disbanded because we weren't gonna time it anyway, and I had to get a whole different group. Not that the group was the issue. The game was the issue. The group was kind of the issue too. Okay, just the mage. After Fenrir decided to follow the script, we got part one down. 
And part two is identical, except he chases you and summons little babies. Dude, I love having cheerleaders because I am absolutely blasting. Max, my DMs are open. You can hire me anytime. Dude, I am going to throw up because we are spinning around this tree with these bears so fast. We forgot the beer, so we have to pull these guys one at a time, which was super cool, super optimal. And the final boss of Halls is Odin, and this fight combines everything from the other bosses, making this fight mega stressful. Bullet hell orbs that will kill you if you touch them. The cleanest rune pickup of all time. And we lust. Time to blast. Hold on guys, give me a second. I gotta channel my trinket for three seconds. Oh my god, dude, there's so many orbs. Why? But after a little bit of trouble and a lot of wipes, Halls 20 is in the books. Let fly! Let fly! Let fly! Alright, I'll admit it. Dragon riding in a dungeon is pretty cool. Dude, the packs in here are fucking huge. Big packs equals big numbies. Big numbies equal better person. Better person, better person, better person. Okay, just get out of the big swirly. Oh, fuck. I'm fine, I'm fine. Just dodge the little swirlies and the volcanoes. And blue swirlies, dude, what the fuck is going on? And you know what, while I'm complaining, what the fuck is up with my UI, dude? It's like I'm piloting a space station, dude. How do I even play like this? And what the dragon doing? Why would these guys run through us to turn off the catapults? Why wouldn't they like, I don't know, go around? All right, all right, back to the real reason why we're here. In this area, you gotta kill all the totems to summon the boss, and a new area means new mobs. Oh, oh, one second. What's that? I still have to dodge swirlies. And volcanoes? And someone needs to kick the storm bolt, or... Oh, sick, an anti-magic zone, bro, thanks. All right, let's just kill the boss, please. Oh, look at that, more blue swirlies. On this fight, you wanna try and Pac-Man all the orbs that you can to keep the damage amp up. It's a fun little game until the boss unleashes absolute hell on everybody. Honestly, as a warrior, I just kinda vibe on this fight, but I'm sure our lizard healer friend is sweating through his clothes. Wait, do lizards even sweat? Let's ask our resident expert, my frog. Sometimes like you'll just see like lizards just with like their mouth open, like kind of pushing themselves off the ground. That's them getting get, getting too hot. They, they basically just open their mouth to cool down. That's that's the simplest way to, to put it. Everyone thank my frog for the lesson while we completely skip the last boss because I really dislike it. Next boss is kind of lame. You just kind of chase the dead horses around for a few minutes. Uh, what the fuck is going on here? Blizzard, help. Dude, the meta way to do this boss is to run his ass into a rock. Like, was this intended, or is the community that gigabrain? And more swirlies. Wouldn't be a good dungeon without him. Oh, we're all gonna get sucked into a spot. Good thing we got a rock. I'll be praised the rock. Oh my god, he's really cranking these swirlies to 11, bro. Oh, sick, a loot chest. I wonder what I'll get. <laughs> doing here Algothar is my favorite dungeon this tier mainly because of the big packs and you know what big packs mean better person better person better person this week is sanguini so let's not run this guy into the puddle Perfect. right in the puddle I couldn't have done it better myself <laughs> Veximus is the easiest boss in the game just pick up the orbs and kill the boss Next, can we talk about these birds? There's no reason these non-elite birds are dropping sanguine. It just makes no sense, Blizzard. After killing the baby birds, Big Mommy Bird shows up. This fight is actually very well made, even though it has way too many swirlies. Every so often, the bird yells at you, and every yell hits harder than the last one. After four stacks of this yell, you're supposed to Kobe the ball into the net, and this will stun the bird so you can pump big numbies. But unfortunately, now that we've done that, we have to deal with like a thousand swirlies that will one-hit you, 
and they like to hide under the boss, so that's super dope. Okay, I guess we're pulling the entire dungeon. Yo, so this boss is actually so fun, even though it's been nerfed into the floor. Every so often he will spawn little seeds and we get to spin around the boss. So the way to do this boss is spin, kill babies, spin, kill babies. What a vibe. At the end of the dungeon, we are sent to the principal's office, who we promptly assault. Feels like Florida education to me. This is just a pump and dump boss that is only hard if people are getting hit by things, so let's move on. This one was easy. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! This dungeon is almost too easy. Running a Shadow Moon 20 is like running a Ragefire Chasm at max level. 420 item level with double damage and hacks. It's that easy. Nothing in here is really worth talking about. Nope, not the first boss. Not this thing either. The Lich King? Nothing special. Now this fucking thing? Fuck this thing. This fight is just awful overall. The worm will do a big frontal and all you have to do is step out of it. I said all you have to do is step out of it. It's the big purple shit on the ground. <laughs> like, how do you miss that? The worm also shoots these puddles for you to stand in so he doesn't suck the meat off your bones when he uses inhale. Sick, someone dropped the puddle so far, I can't even hit the boss. And he's gone. Phenomenal. My uptime on this boss is so bad because the puddles are never in range of the boss. This is probably one of the biggest reasons why I hate this boss so much. Yeah, this fight is actually terrible. Let's just move on to a better dungeon. You know what? I'm feeling pretty good. I think we're going to do this one on a 21. I will save these eggs. You know what? I feel pretty good about this one. I think we're going to try it at a 20. So in the playback here, you can kind of see the circle. Oh, you can't? Well, neither could I. Tactical thundering clear though. Melodrissi here is the first boss and this one is pretty fun. Just pump the boss until all these little children come out. Then you pump the kids. You know what I was thinking while I was killing this boss? I wonder what the KSM mount looks like. Oh my God, what is that? Is, is that a reskin Kodo? Did Blizzard really give us a mount that can't fly in an expansion called Dragon Flight? Wow, a dragon mob in the dragon expansion. Man, wow, that, that's crazy, isn't it? Oh my god, true? This trash is actually going by very smoothly. <laughs> oh my god, he just got one shot. Love to see it. Oh, the poor guy just realized. Second boss is Blazehoof, which is a convenient last name to have considering what she does for a living. Could you imagine if she was like a dentist? This boss is extremely stressful and can be thrown in an instant because of one bad position player. She will spawn a fire elemental on a player that needs to die ASAP. She also throws these giant meatballs that leave fire behind, so you better bait them to a good spot. The longer this fight goes on for, more fire will consume the platform, making it harder and harder to move around. With five minutes left on the clock, we pull the last boss. If there are any mistakes or any deaths, we probably won't time it. Much like the previous boss, this boss will slowly fill the room with fire. Do you know what's worse than fire? Moving fire. At 50%, the bosses join together, ironically making this fight a lot easier because now I can cleave them. Oh my god, dude, why is there so much fire? Once the dragon dies, this fight is like taking candy from a... Maybe I spoke too soon. After a swift battle res, we pump the boss until it dies, giving us our fifth dungeon done on 20, leaving three more. I actually really like Temple of the Jade Serpent. It's quick and easy and short, just like me. After crushing the first pack, the tank just kind of gets up and leaves. Other than that, I reformed the group and we just cleared the dungeon. Nothing really happened. Pass. 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 Smash. Everything in this dungeon is way too purple. Purple floor, purple packs, 
purple trees, purple animations, and dead holy priests, as they usually are. So in this first room, we are only supposed to pull this pack with the worms, then sneak past the rest. But I decided that I was going to pull the whole room. Why did that mean? Man, I'm seeing this angel more and more, I swear. So court is a weird dungeon, because professions play a huge role in this. It is the only dungeon where it's completely RNG on how fast you clear it. On the first boss, we poison the boss's Kool-Aid, and we will see what that does here shortly. This boss is pretty simple. He just throws a bunch of, you guessed it, purple stuff. He will also force you to jump, but we have an alive holy priest, so they can mass the spell every single one. All in all, this fight normally goes super smooth. Oh, he missed the master spell and killed our other DPS. Not me, obviously, because I'm built different, but yikes. Once the boss hits 25%, he drinks the Kool-Aid and fucking dies. This is the part of the dungeon that gets a little wacky. All over the map, there are different profession items that give you varying buffs or summons. The best part is, is that they are completely random spawns, and the demon can also spawn in completely random locations. Gotta love this place. So in order to fight the next boss, you have to kill her three bodyguards beforehand, by either killing these red bitches, or making them run over to you using one of the profession items. Is her name... I'm a cut ya? My immersion is ruined. We got lucky and another red bitch spawned right next to us, so we can just pull the next bodyguard leaving one bodyguard left. So we send our rogue out to do, I don't know, some rogue shit somewhere, and he spawns the third bodyguard. Now we tackle the boss. I like this boss a lot. You just spin around and kill the little imp boys and hit the boss. This fight is a lot more stressful as a healer, but that's not really our problem, so fuck him. After extinguishing the boss's fire, we move into the next bit of randomness. We are subjugated to playing Among Us. One of these Nightborn are not like the other, so you go through the room and you speak to some of the Nightborn to find out who the imposter might be. Then you have to do a fit check on everybody to see who matches the clues. Once located, he will randomly pat to one of the sides. And oh my god, I went to the wrong side. Once you kill the imposter, the door to the last boss opens. There's a lot more randomness in this dungeon, but this isn't a guide, I don't know, go google it or something. This fight is needlessly stressful. He will spawn lines that used to blend into the floor. Thank you, Blizzard, for patching that. And if you stand in it, you'll fucking die. He will also drop little clouds of dust on the floor that'll make you slip and fall, so be aware of that. And then he just kind of stands there and hurts everybody a bunch. Then he cycles through all of these abilities. Eventually, there will be a lot of lines. All in all, very simple fight that you could fuck up very quickly. And now this is where things get really stupid and really blue. Oh no. 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 Azur Vault is the final boss of the dungeons. This place is a blue hellscape. From the first pull to the last boss, this place just haunts my dreams and I cannot wait for it to rotate out. There are like eight different routes, so you really have no idea which way your tank's gonna go. And every single pack in here all have something annoying about them, whether it be an ability with like a thousand blue swirlies or a giant ring so I can't hit anything, dragons that summon rocks, trees that turn you into trees, I can't even walk around this dungeon without being made tiny. Like what the fuck is even happening here? But I somehow put together a squad of people who can navigate this blue hell hole efficiently and we are off on our way. The first boss is the only relaxed part of this dungeon. Hit the big rock guy and blow up the trees. After killing a bunch of purple rock guys and dealing with every single blue swirly in the game, so we head to the blue circle room full of blue dragons and a blue dragon boss. She's gonna be real blue when I'm done with her. This boss is truly something else. Occasionally she will throw blue purple orbs in a direction that will one hit you. 
She will also summon a little image that casts some blue stuff, and can you guess what happens when it dies? If you guess makes blue stuff, you'd be correct. Then she goes into intermission, which is rough, I'm not gonna lie. The boss encircles herself in blue, and shoots the same orbs from every direction. Your group needs to kill every blue boy to stop the blue from coming at you. But when the blue boys die, they explode in blue, giving you this decision of, of which direction doesn't have blue that will kill me. Throughout this phase, she will also pulse blue, rotting everybody's health. Apparently, there is too much blue for the healer to handle. The only redeeming quality about this dungeon is that the last three bosses are back to back to back, if you do the correct route. So after the second boss, you just jump from this ring onto the lower ring, and you'll be in the third boss room. This third boss isn't really hard, but it eats so much time on your key because he flies up and just laughs at you while you wait. Then it's just rinse and repeat. That's my boy. No, my boy! Bother hell! Okay, I guess we're formatting this now. Wait, we can't stand in the bubble because of the puddle. Oh wait, that rhyme- <laughs> Okay, I guess we're going to one-man this. Then this absolute unit of a tank, then solos the boss from 15%. What an absolute chad, dude. At the start of this fight, the boss poisons everyone. Whenever you move, you begin to get slowed, stacking until you move at the speed of a Fury's brain, which is really annoying because you are going to have to move a lot during this fight. The boss will spawn crystals that need to die ASAP because they will explode at the end of their channels. We left one crystal alive and it wiped all of us. So 12 deaths later and four minutes remaining on the clock, we go for the blue. Did I mention you are also avoiding giant blue balls throughout this entire fight? Like I said, this whole place is just way too blue. Fractures go out and we actually clear them this time and we pump this big blue bitch as hard as we can. And just like that, all the dungeons are completed on a 20. When all is said and done, minuses or vaults, I actually really enjoyed this dungeon rotation, and I actually had a lot of fun in Season 1. I'm looking forward to Season 2, and I'm looking to push my rating a little bit further. I think I want to get to like 3k. Ooh, which reminds me, where did we land at the end of Season 1? Number 1, biggest number bestest person! Eat your heart out, guilds! We made it to the big time! Let's go!